Right, so um, we finished hard baking the sample, so the next step will be to, pour, to put the sample in a container. In our case, we're going to use a Petri dish. And we're going to pour over the sample with the SO8 pattern on top of it. We're going to pour over the PDMS mixture. So the next step in the processing is to actually do the mix mixing of the PDMS. So the PDMS itself is delivered as uh, a kit. It's called Silgat 184. Uh, that's the most common one, uh, but there might be also some other brands available of similar materials. So when it's delivered, it's delivered in two components. There is one can, which is the elastomer. And then the second component is the curing agent. So these from the specifications in the data sheet of uh, Dow Corning, which is the manufacturer, uh, we are supposed to mix it in a ratio of uh, one part curing agent to 10 parts uh, elastomer. So that's what we're going to do now. Although uh, you can look in the literature and you will see that it's possible also to use different ratios between uh, the curing agent and uh, the elastomer. Um, and this might affect the, the time that is required for the curing and also the uh, physical properties of the PDMS. So it might make it uh, more stiff or may perhaps uh, a bit more soft, a bit more uh, rubbery. So you will need to check the, the literature if you want to tweak uh, the composition of the mixture. So I'm going to prepare a cup, so you want to be using a, a relatively big cup. Um, so in this case I'm going to mix about uh, 50, 45 uh, grams of PDMS in this cup. And this is a roughly half litre cup, so this should be uh, able to comfortably contain the PDMS. Um, and the reason that I'm picking up a, a much bigger cup than I, than I really need to do the weighing of the material is that um, once we mix it, we're going to get a lot of bubbles in the mixture and we're going to have to go through a, a degassing step. And the degassing step will expand the volume of the mixture by a very large amount. Um, and from my experience, this cup is sufficient for roughly 50 grams of mixture. So I'm going to give this cup a quick blow, just to get rid of any dust that might be inside the cup. And I'm going to put it on the scale. I'm going to turn that and I'm going to open the can with the elastomer. So keep a, a tissue ready because um, the PDMS is very viscous. It's also not readily dissolved in any common solvents, so you will just uh, need to do your best to wipe it off once you are finished with it. So I'm going to aim for about 45 grams of PDMS, actually of the elastomer material. So we're getting close to 45. I'm not too worried about the exact number that I'm going to get, so something roughly around 45 would probably be sufficient. So that would probably be okay for my process today. Okay, I'm going to wipe it off. Okay, and we can close the elastomer bottle. So the exact amount that I'm measuring, it will depend on the container that you're going to use to uh, where you're going to put your substrate that you are trying to mold. Um, so essentially what you're aiming for is to get the thickness of PDMS above the surface of the substrate that has the SU8 pattern of about 5 to 8 millimeters. And that's going to give enough um, thickness of PDMS for uh, any fittings that you're going to put into the chip, for example tubing or, or other uh, metallic fittings such as uh, syringe needles. So this will give it enough thickness to engage. Uh, with the PDMS and it will give you a, a leak-free connection. So this is now 45 uh, grams, so now I'm going to uh, reset that and I'm going to pour in uh, 4.5 grams of curing agent. You don't need to be precise down to the milligram, so um, as long as you are sort of within 10% of the amounts that you are aiming to measure, you will probably get um, a good cure. So that's probably the right amount, 4.5, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to take a clean mixing stick, for example a spatula like this. So remember um, that 
it will be very difficult to get completely rid of uh, PDMS. The best way to get rid of it is to wipe it off uh, at the end. So you might consider using a disposable spatula to do the mixing. And so you just start mixing gently to begin with. And then a little bit more vigorously, making sure that you get into all the corners of the cup. And then at some point you can start to be a little bit more vigorous with the mixing. Okay? And as you can see, I'm forming a lot of bubbles during the process and this is a completely normal thing because I'm mixing a very viscous liquid in air and that's why we will require the degassing step after the mixing. So I'm going to keep on mixing for another 20-30 seconds. You just want to make sure that you scrape the edges regularly and get into the corners of the cup. Like so. Okay, that will be sufficient for the mixing. So as you can see, we have a mixture which is pretty much white in color. And that's mostly because we have a lot of bubbles in the mixture. So we have to get rid of these bubbles before we pour uh, the PDMS into the mold uh, for the SU8 channels. Uh, that's because otherwise we're going to get a lot of bubbles in contact with the channels, which are going to make uh, uh, channels which are imperfect in shape. Or we also might get bubbles near the inlets, which are going to give us leaky inlets in, uh, once we punch them and try to fit in some tubing. So it's very important to do the degassing step and to get a clear PDMS liquid. Okay, so we moved to a different lab for the degassing step. So this is the same cup that I just uh, mixed uh, beforehand. And for the degassing, we're going to put the um, PDMS cup inside a desiccator that looks like this. So it's just a, a sealed container that is connected to a vacuum pump. So uh, remember to line the bottom of the desiccator with a piece of paper. So in case you spill any PDMS, it's not going to go directly into the in contact with the chamber. So I'm going to close the desiccator like so. And um, so now the next thing will be to turn on the vacuum pump. So what the vacuum pump will do is it will uh, evacuate the air that is inside the desiccator chamber. It will drop the pressure inside the desiccator and this will um, increase the size of the bubbles inside the mixture. And as they increase in size, they will make their way towards the surface. And once they make their way towards the surface, they will get bigger and bigger until they get big enough to pop. And so our goal here is to really get these bubbles to grow as big as possible until they pop. And so one by one, they will uh, um, gradually collapse and it will leave a clear liquid without any bubbles. So um, for the degassing step, we're going to um, operate the, the desiccator with this valve. So this is one type of valve that you might uh, come across. Um, so um, I say that this valve has uh, three positions. One is the completely open position, which is when you have the valve completely pulled out. So as you can see, this is just a taper, tapered piece of uh, uh, plastic, which is used to control the amount of flow. So um, when you just screw it in very loosely, uh, a couple of turns, this is what I would call the, uh, the vent position. So in this uh, condition here, we have the chamber, which is connected uh, to the pump through this T-junction, but it's also directly connected to the ambient pressure. So uh, this is a vented position. When you start to screw in the valve a little bit, uh, you will gradually close off the passage of air uh, through the top of the valve, so there will be no connection to the ambient uh, pressure. But instead, the only connection will be between the chamber of the desiccator and the vacuum pump. And so this is the setting uh, uh, that I would call the open position. Uh, but it's also an adjustable open position because I can um, screw the valve in and gradually this uh, little piston will block more of this uh, T-junction so uh, I can regulate the amount of um, action that the vacuum pump is doing uh, inside the chamber. So for now I'm going to keep it very close to the vent position to start with. And actually the, then the last position uh, that I haven't mentioned is if I screw in the valve all the way uh, to the bottom, this will completely block the passage of uh, any air um, in the T-junction and this will seal off the chamber from the vacuum pump. This is a position that we're not going to use for this process. So here we're going to use the open position, uh, which is when the valve is sort of halfway screwed in and the vent position which is when it's completely uh, nearly completely removed. So now I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump. 
uh, like that, there's just a switch on the side. And now I can hear it actually hissing uh, near the top of the valve. So uh, in this condition, because the pump is quite strong, actually we're gonna already start evacuating the uh, desiccator, but to, to make this whole process a little bit more effective, I'm gonna close the valve a little bit, so now it stopped hissing, and now we are uh, directly evacuating the chamber. And we have to keep an eye on the level of the PDMS. So as you can see here, um, the bubbles in the PDMS mixture will start to grow in size. As you can see, they are growing up and they are approaching the, the top of the, the cup. So you just have to be careful. And if it starts to, um, if the bubbles start to um, overflow past the level of the cup and there, I risk spilling lots of PDMS uh, in, the, in the desiccator chamber, I need to be ready to vent with the valve. So right now you see that the bubbles are gradually popping and if you vent it uh, quickly, uh, the, all of the bubbles will collapse. Now having the bubbles grow and then collapse but without popping is actually not a very effective way uh, to degas the mixture. So ideally you want to have a container that is big enough um, uh, to allow you to um, just pump the chamber and go straight uh, and, and leave it pumped uh, until all the bubbles are gone. In this case I have a little bit too much mixture for this particular cup but every time I open the vent valve and I rapidly collapse the bubbles uh, a good number of them will collapse. Um, so it's not a very efficient process, but with the amount of PDMS that I have, I think I'm relatively confident that over a couple of runs, uh, it will be able to uh, degas completely. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And, and another option that you have to make this process a little, a little bit quicker is uh, to vent completely, um, which will get more of the bubbles uh, to closer to the surface to start with. But this is now, I think, very in a very good situation. So as you can see, the bubbles are now growing and it's and they're popping and at some point they will quite rapidly collapse all the way to the bottom. So we keep looking at the, the bubbles and there we go, they are pretty much all collapsed. So at this point, once you're comfortable that the mixture will not overflow the cup that you put it in, you can just leave the vacuum pump on and leave the whole mixture to pump for a couple of minutes. So the mixture has now been pumping and degassing for, uh, for a few minutes. There's no need to leave it for a very long time. You can just keep an eye on the mixture through the glass of the desiccator. And once you see that it's clear, then you can turn off the pump and uh, vent the chamber. And as we vent the chamber, we'll take out the liquid and we can check if there are any bubbles left. If you don't see any bubbles, then it means that probably there aren't any or they're very, very small. In any case, you don't need to worry uh, about every single last bubble because as we pour the PDMS now, you see now it's a very uh, clear mixture. That's what we're looking for. And now this is the uh, glass eye with the SU8 pattern of the channel that we prepared beforehand. And now I'm gonna pour this mixture into the Petri dish. And we just coat it gradually all the way. Now, of course, because this is, again, it's a viscous liquid and we're pouring it in air, we are almost inevitably going to get some bubbles also uh, at this stage. So once I'm, uh, I finish pouring the PDMS and I'm comfortable they have sufficient amount of PDMS in the Petri dish, um, I will also put the Petri dish itself with the sample in the desiccator for another few minutes to get those bubbles out of the way. So this is definitely a generous amount of PDMS for this size of container. I'm going to stop there. And that's it. So now I'm going to bring this back into the desiccator and leave it to pump for another few minutes. So in this case, the um, we are not gonna get the same um, large amount uh, of bubble generation as we did before in the cup because the mixture is already mostly degassed. So we're just trying to get rid of those last few bubbles which have formed while I was pouring the mixture. So we'll turn on the pump again, close the stopcock a little bit, 
um, so it's now in the pumping position and we're going to leave it to pump for about five minutes so at this stage even if you see uh, a few little bubbles um, at, at, the la at the end of these few minutes of pumping uh, you can still probably vent it uh, because the bubbles will get very very small and in any case after the first couple of minutes if the pump is sufficiently strong all the bubbles which are, were in contact uh, with the channel so at the bottom of the PDMS which are the ones that we really care about will probably have already made their way to the surface and they will have popped or, or they will become very small after venting. The petri dish has now been uh, degassing for a few minutes uh, so now even though not all the bubbles are completely gone uh, I'm happy to turn off the pump and uh, do the venting process and what you're looking for is to get a completely clear mixture on top of the substrate with the channels. Okay, that's now vented. And I can take out my piece of uh, uh, glass with the PDMS. So uh, it can happen particularly uh, when you're pouring um, PDMS into a petri dish with the glass slide already in there that you might get a, a bubble that is trapped underneath the glass slide and that will usually take a very very long time to degas. So as I said before you don't need to really worry about it too much because that's on the bottom surface as long as you don't see any bubbles on the top surface which is the one that uh, holds, hosts the, the channels uh, you're pretty much good to go. So now I'm going to cover this and we're going to put this in um, an incubator or an oven at 60 degrees for two hours and this will give us a full cure of the PDMS. Uh, the curing temperature is a parameter that can be changed um, so the PDMS will cure at room temperature once it's mixed in the 1 to 10 ratio over about 24 to 48 hours um, but also it can be put at higher temperature, say 100 degrees, 150 or 200 degrees C, uh, maybe up to 200, maybe I'm not sure if you can go above that before you start degrading the properties. Um, and so you can cure it at a higher temperature for a shorter amount of time. So probably if you go above 100 degrees, you can cure it in already uh, sort of 10, 15, 20 minutes. And the thing that changes with the temperature is the physical properties of the PDMS. So uh, a faster cure at a higher temperature will usually give you a PDMS that is more stiff uh, uh, and more solid, whereas curing at a lower temperature for a, for a longer period of time will give you a PDMS that is softer and more flexible and more rubbery. So uh, in our case, we're going to do a cure for two hours at 60 degrees C.